consensus uh, document that uh, uh, we put together in 2013 about the uh, multimodality imaging in patients with the pericardial disease. And uh, it states that the echocardiography is the initial uh, testing for most of uh, uh, pericardial uh, disease. And then uh, CMR and the CT uh, can usually be added uh, when there is a complexity not handled by echocardiography or technically limited window, or when we really need the tissue characterization uh, uh, information is needed, uh, uh, such as a, a pericardial uh, inflammation. Let me just uh, uh, you know, review what each modality can do. This is cardiac CT, really fantastic for uh, uh, delineating the structure. Here is a thick pericardium and also calcification uh, in patients with the uh, uh, constricted pericarditis. And when you don't have uh, pericardium, also a CT can show that uh, in this uh, uh, 3D uh, uh, rendition. So this is a really fantastic uh, in that way. And the cardiac MRI uh, also shows a structure, but more importantly, uh, in the CNA imaging, uh, this one shows the uh, typical uh, septal motion abnormality of a constriction uh, of interventricular dependence. And I think the most uh, important information for the, from cardiac MRI is the uh, uh, pericardial inflammation, uh, as you see uh, here in patients with the uh, uh, recurrent uh, pericarditis. And echocardiography shows the uh, uh, structure again, a pericardial cyst, and this is the uh, tamponade with a really massive uh, effusion, and this is the uh, uh, typical septal motion changes again uh, you see in patients with uh, uh, constricted pericarditis. So uh, in addition, though, echocardiography uh, has the uh, 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 this uh, hemodynamic uh, uh, information, and this is uh, uh, echocardiographic diagnostic criteria for constriction, and you can see that the uh, septal motion change very nicely with the contrast, uh, contrast administration, mitral info velocity, uh, restricted pattern with or without the respiratory variation, and medial E prime velocity of uh, eight centimeter per second or greater, and most specifically, the hepatic vein Doppler uh, uh, flow reversal uh, here with expiration uh, uh, and, uh, indicating the constriction. So if you show these four parameters uh, in patients uh, with the uh, you know, right heart failure with the jugular venous pressure elevation, I think the uh, diagnosis of a constriction can be uh, uh, readily, uh, readily uh, made. Let me just show you uh, this animation. I think I've shown you many, many times, but I think this uh, explains why those uh, uh, echocardiographic uh, 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 findings are there for constriction. They're really based on this uh, uh, intra uh, uh, cardiac and intrathoracic pressure difference with the respiration and interventricular uh, dependence. And if you uh, uh, look at this uh, respiration phase inspiration, uh, intrathoracic pressure falls with a really no significant change in intracardiac pressure that decreases the driving pressure gradient to the left and allowing the septum to deviate to the left and more filling to the right side chambers. So that pulmonary vein Doppler and the mitral info velocity, uh, especially E velocity, decreases. And then tricuspid info velocity increases with the uh, uh, significant increase in forward flow velocity in hepatic pain. And you have, uh, uh, with expiration, with an increase in intrathoracic pressure, with a minimal change in the intracardiac pressure, increase in driving pressure gradient to the uh, left, septum to the right, less filling to the right side chambers, and you have the increased velocity on the left, pulmonary vein and mitral valve, and then tricuspid valve flow velocity decreases, and you have a significant reduction in forward flow velocity uh, in the hepatic vein, along with the uh, uh, increase in the uh, reversal flow velocity it's right here. This is how uh, we uh, uh, diagnose constricted pericarditis by uh, Doppler echocardiography. Another important uh, parameter uh, is the uh, uh, mitral annulus velocity. And uh, as you know, that uh, this is uh, uh, reflect the myocardial relaxation. Usually, medial E prime velocity is about 10. The lateral is about 15. But in all forms of uh, myocardial disease, I mean all forms of myocardial disease, amyloid, hypertrophy, uh, coronary disease, E prime velocity, the relaxation is, uh, is reduced. So usually it's less than seven. In symptomatic patient, it's usually five centimeters per second or, or less. But in patients with a constriction, 
the, because of the limitation of the lateral motion of the heart, most of the feeling has to come uh, from the uh, vigorous uh, up and down uh, motion of the of the uh, of the annulus, and then e prime velocity as a result increases. So. Uh, if you want to uh, learn one thing from this slide is that if someone with a heart failure with a normal ejection fraction and uh, uh, clinical examination shows a jugular ven venous pressure elevation and E prime velocity, medial E prime velocity uh, in this case, is a centimeter per second or greater, it's most likely that patient has a constricted pericarditis. I mean, you know, that's a relatively easy uh, way uh, way of uh, diagnosing uh, constriction uh, in our, our clinical uh, uh, practice. So let me just then show you uh, with a few cases uh, this uh, use of the multimodality imaging in spectrum of pericardial disease is a pericarditis, uh, effusion tamponade, and constriction. And the one stage, is, uh, stage of uh, pericardial disease can uh, transition to other uh, uh, stage uh, based on the treatment or natural history of that particular uh, 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 state. So this is the first case of a young individual with a chest pain, and uh, uh, ECG shows the SD elevation. So they thought the patient is having STEMI and they referred to our uh, emergency department. But echocardiography is completely normal, no wall motion changes there, and not even pericardial effusion. But the, uh, this indicates pericarditis, and then cardiac MRI shows a marked inflammation of the pericardium. So uh, I just want to tell you that the echocardiography can be uh, normal in more than half of the patients, uh, more than 50% of uh, patients with acute pericarditis. The most sensitive marker for pericardial inflammation uh, or uh, diagnosis of acute pericarditis is a cardiac MRI and showing this uh, uh, pericardial inflammation. And this one actually uh, the last, sometimes more than three, three to six months, even without chest pain. And that's why we recommend that the uh, uh, one month of NSAID and the three months of colchicine, regardless of their pain uh, uh, status. I think that's the main problem that, uh, uh, you know, the patients having pain and the, the take a medication for a week or two, pain goes away and they stop taking medication. And that's when uh, the inflammation continues to go on, may develop constriction, more develop uh, recurrent pericarditis. And I uh, also like to uh, uh, mention or recommend that uh, we should avoid steroid because that uh, uh, increased the uh, recurrence rate. And also, we uh, uh, like to have uh, uh, patients with acute pericarditis avoid vigorous exercise for three months because of the tachycardia or the uh, you know vigorous contact uh, between the heart and pericardium can uh, increase the uh, uh, pericardial uh, inflammation. That's on that. Cardiac uh, tamponade and pericardial effusion, and this is a, a small effusion here on your left, and this massive inflammation. But these two patients here was a hypotensive and tachycardic, and the last patient uh, was not tachycardic at all, uh, was not hypotensive. Only problem patient was having was a right upper quadrant pain. So uh, effusion amount is not uh, always correlating with the uh, uh, hemodynamics of the pericardial effusion, and it's a lot to do with the acuity of uh, pericardial inflammation. And uh, uh, you see the uh, sometimes RB collapse, very subtle, but uh, can be shown by M mode, and then much inflow velocity of uh, respiratory aeration and hepatic vein ex expiratory flow reversal is a very uh, 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 sensitive marker for uh, cardiac uh, tamponade, as you see uh, here. And this is an example of an uh, 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 elderly gentleman with a severe AS, TAVR, and pacemaker uh, during the procedure became hypotensive, and echocardiography shows the uh, hemopericardium. You can see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, characteristic structure for uh, a blood clot there. And pericardiosynthesis uh, re uh, yielded 125cc of bloody fluid. Patient was feeling well and uh, went home. And two months later, though, uh, comes back to us with uh, even worse symptoms. Uh, uh, of a heart failure and significant uh, fluid retention. And you can see that the uh, increased pericardial thickness there with the tethering of the myocardium to the, to the liver uh, with the uh, pericardium uh, in between. And this patient developed uh, effusive constricted pericarditis, and we can confirm that 
by Doppler echocardiography uh, with the, again, mitral inflow velocity showing uh, significant respiratory variation with hepatic vein Doppler showing the uh, flow reversal there. With the medical therapy, you can see the uh, resolution of, uh, of uh, uh, those uh, uh, parameters as you see. And we also demonstrate that with a cardiac MRI, uh, uh, can show the significant inflammation. In this particular case, whenever you see that, uh, we can uh, use the medical therapy, even with the constrictive uh, signs and symptoms, and resolve their symptoms and the uh, pericardial inflammation. So we always do cardiac MRI uh, in patients with a constriction, not someone who had a constriction for several years, but the relatively recent uh, constricted pericarditis. I think cardiac MRI is essential to figure out whether uh, patient can be treated uh, medically. This is a 40-year-old uh, patient with uh, acute pericarditis, and initially a large effusion, pericardiosynthesis, still uh, having problem undoing pericardial window, but still having trouble uh, with the uh, uh, persistent shortness of breath and then fluid retention. And when she came to us, uh, echocardiography again shows the uh, typical uh, interventricular dependence and then uh, IBS is uh, quite plethoric. I think you can diagnose constriction just based on this uh, 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 imaging, and you can confirm that by Doppler echocardiography of a much inflow velocity uh, restrictive, in this case, uh, respiratory variation, and e prime velocity is a 16. Uh, even for 40-year-old, it's a markedly increased, and then hepatic vein uh, diastolic flow reversals, as you see it there. And then cardiac MRI is very helpful. Uh, again, uh, visceral and parietal pericardium was uh, uh, inflamed. Uh, and then you can see that uh, free breathing sequence showing the uh, uh, typical septal motion uh, abnormality. The patient uh, was treated with the uh, steroid but didn't uh, resolve the entire uh, situation. So patient underwent uh, pericardiectomy. As you see it here, this is a before and then opening of the pericardium and completed and bulging of the heart. And we do the intraoperative echocardiogram. It's pretty interesting. The RV and even LV is uh, quite tethered. And then that's a fully mobile uh, after uh, pericardiectomy. We always do the, uh, 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 the imaging of the uh, mitral and then tricuspid valve uh, because the, some patients uh, develop a significant uh, tricuspid valve uh, re regurgitations as you see here. After pericardectomy, uh, intraoperative echocardiography uh, is very, uh, very important because of the, uh, 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 some patients may develop significant uh, tricuspid valve regurgitation uh, because of the expansion of the uh, tricuspid valve annulus, as you see there. And also, uh, uh, these patients develop a significant mitral valve regurgitation after pericardectomy, uh, requiring, the, uh, requiring mitral valve uh, repair. And uh, one uh, important uh, 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 lesson is that the patients with a constriction may present to our GI colleagues or pulmonary uh, uh, colleagues uh, because of their symptoms, maybe uh, pleural effusion or significant liver function abnormality. And this particular patient actually was uh, scheduled to have a liver transplant. And you can see the uh, uh, jugular venous distension and then typical echocardiographic and also cardiac catheterization uh, features of uh, uh, constricted pericarditis uh, requiring uh, pericardiectomy. Let me just uh, finish uh, uh, with the uh, 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 interesting case that uh, requiring multimodality imaging with a pericardial disease in 45-year-old uh, patient with uh, chest pain and uh, uh, he has a history of uh, IVC filter placed uh, a few years ago, and emergency room showing the uh, uh, pericardial effusion. But there's a little linear structure that uh, was uh, uh, somewhat peculiar and also shown in the uh, uh, 3D imaging, and we decided to proceed with the uh, uh, cardiac CT, and this uh, linear structure piercing through the RV and the uh, 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 septal wall, and this uh, happens to be uh, the, uh, um, uh, the one of the strut that uh, migrated uh, from the IVC filter. This is uh, uh, at the time of uh, implantation, and then this is uh, now uh, one filter uh, was uh, lost, and this is what uh, caused the uh, pericardial effusion and tamponade and chest pain, and multimodality imaging really uh, helped us 